Sega of America spent a ton of time and resources creating a market that would appeal to Western gamers. Right from the beginning, they doubled down on sports games like football, baseball, and basketball. They attached the top coaches and athletes to their games. Sega also had the wherewithal to understand that they needed as many different games as possible, so even when a Japanese IP like Fist of the North Star didn't make sense, they still released it under a new name with a new story. But that wasn't the only game that received that kind of treatment. In December of 1990, Vic Tokai developed a Japanese Mega Drive game based on the Magical Hat anime series, which was published by Sega. This title featured heavy platforming and had loads of items you could collect and use at will. The stages were laid out so there was lots of verticality and there was often a few different routes you could take to get to the end. But for as fun as it could be, it was a one-hit wonder and boy was it frustrating. It's one of the more difficult games I've tried to defeat on the Mega Drive and honestly, I never felt the gameplay was strong enough to warrant that level of challenge. Since this game was directly tied to a very Japanese license, Sega and Vic Tokai decided it needed some very big modifications for the US and European markets. And so it was that Decap Attack was released in September of 1991, one of the strangest games in the platform's library. The story has been changed dramatically, now revolving around the evil demon known as Max D. Cap, who has split the world up into several islands as his minions conquer and subjugate the land. That's when Dr. Frank Einstein sends in his monstrous creation, Chuck D. Head, to free the land and reconnect them all. Chuck appears to have no head, but it's actually there in his chest. The first thing you will notice when you start playing is that there is an entire overhaul of many of the visual assets from the original game. Decap Attack has much darker graphics that sees new enemies, changes to the stage layouts, and of course an entirely new main character sprite. Much of the gameplay is very similar however. Instead of the punch scene in Magical Hat, Chuck D. Head attacks with his midsection or can jump on enemies' heads Super Mario style. You still have the ability to slow your falls by rapidly pressing the jump button, which allows you to float pretty far across the screen. And you still have access to all those potions that have different effects on you. Chuck also has a skull-like power-up that serves as both a projectile attack and an extra hit point. And speaking of hit points, Chuck also has hearts that act as his life. Each heart can take two hits before it disappears, and once all your hearts are gone, it's game over. Breakable statues litter each and every stage, and that's where you'll find your items you need to help you. Extra lives and coins are hidden in them as well. Coins are used for the bonus games after each area is defeated. These give you a shot at even more potions and extra lives. Potions range in type and when you can use them. Red potions kill all enemies on the screen. Blue potions make you invincible. Yellow potions can be used as a heat-seeking attack. Green potions freeze enemies in place. The red vials you get allow you to move faster and jump higher. The large orange potion increases your attack power and range. Keep in mind that many of these potions are useless against bosses. The final items you need to worry about are the hidden treasures. In the third round of every level, there is a hidden treasure somewhere in that area that must be collected in order for you to move on. It's often out of the way or tucked into a corner that is easily missed. As I mentioned before, the graphical changes here profoundly alter the look and feel of the original game. Everything is much darker, enemies have been changed to strange concoctions that range from little ghosts to guys that have arrows on their heads. Despite nothing here looking bad, I can't say Decap Attack is an especially impressive effort. Nothing really sticks out and grabs your attention. While there is a dedicated background layer that scrolls independently from the foreground, it lacks any meaningful parallax so everything looks flat and lifeless. 
This was also a 4 megabit game, so the animation is simplistic and there are many assets that are reused the entire way through its 7 stages. This is also one of those titles that just has that quintessential Genesis look to it. The color choices just scream, I'm a Genesis game, and you'd never mistake this for a TurboGrafx or Super Nintendo title. One of the brighter spots in its presentations are the bosses. They tend to be large and each one has unique attacks that set them apart from the standard gameplay. Outside of those, however, I feel Decap Attack is a rather unimpressive title visually. You have to remember that this was released in late 1991, after we had been getting games like Sonic, Shadow Dancer, Musha, and Castle of Illusion. Compared to those games, this looks almost like something the Master System could have pulled off. It's not awful, but by the end of 1991, there were much better looking choices for Sega's 16-bit platform. Because Sega changed the story and visuals, it only made sense for them to want a new soundtrack as well. And here, Decap Attack shines much more brightly. I really enjoyed the music and sound effects and found it much more appealing than the drab and simple graphics. Let's go ahead and listen to three different tracks so you can get an idea of its quality. One of the biggest problems with Magical Hat was the one-hit deaths. I just never felt motivated to deal with that in a game of that type. Fortunately, the change to hearts and taking multiple hits in Decap Attack really changes things. It's less frustrating and allows the core gameplay to shine more. The gameplay can be extremely fun. It has all the staples a good platformer needs to keep you coming back. There's plenty to collect. Stages are a good size and require a bit of exploration, and of course you have underwater sections to mix things up. The bosses offer both a challenge and a cool visual element to things, perhaps the game's greatest asset. There are a few things about Decap Attack I did not enjoy much, however. Aside from the stage graphics being underwhelming, I also did not appreciate some of the interaction with enemies. There are a number of bad guys here that need multiple hits to get rid of. Thing is, these guys have no stun animation, so even with the first hit, they keep coming at you non-stop, often leaving you open to get easily hit yourself. I also hated the tedious nature of some of the level layouts. Some of these areas load up on the little bouncy arrows that make basic navigation a pain. The sixth level in particular is a slog of platforms that made me want to turn the game off. I also found the potions to be pretty useless in regular play. While the power-ups for your speed and attack are helpful against bosses, they are nearly useless during the actual stages. They only last 10 seconds, and you just don't need them. The potions you can't use during the bosses are almost completely useless as well. I mean, you just rarely get yourself into any position that any of these become a necessity. Decap Attack is far from a bad experience, however. The core game is fun and simple to get into. Crank your hearts up to three, and even your kids can play with you. It doesn't really get challenging until the final two levels, and even then, most of you should be able to beat this without a ton of trouble. That makes it kind of a laid-back experience. Be patient, don't take it too seriously, and this can be well worth a few evenings of your time. Vic 
Tokai had an interesting run on the Genesis, from the early shoot 'em up whip rush to the insanely popular Battle Mania titles, Decap Attack stands out as unique among their releases. Hell, it's unique among any releases, really. While I did not care for the rather drab visual presentation, I did enjoy the soundtrack and the gameplay was fun enough to hold my attention until the very end. It's a much better experience than Magical Hat was, and I can definitely understand why so many people hold it in high regard. Most of the time when a game gets reskinned, not enough changes are made to really make any meaningful impact, but here, I feel it worked out for the best. Most publications of the era seem to think so too. No matter where you look, Decap Attack was well received. GamePro loved it, Game Informer thought it was well worth playing, Sega Pro felt it a must own, and even Joypad praised it in a multi-page spread as one of Sega's better releases that year. Funny enough, most every review that I've read found the graphics to be quite appealing, which I never really understood. Perhaps I am in the minority there and the art just didn't appeal to me on a personal level. Either way, I do recommend you play Decap Attack and see what it's about. I feel most of you will appreciate the gameplay enough to really enjoy it, and it might even be worth looking at the original Magical Hat so you can see where it all started. Solid platformers are a dime a dozen on the Genesis, but I guarantee you have never played anything quite like this one. It's another one that Sega should have built a franchise around, and well worth your time. I'm Sega Lord X. thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.